we are um, at Short Street. Uh, the plaque is there indicating and the walls of Clonmel you can see are just above us here. So the walls will come down here. It was at this point here believed that um, the breach, that's a break, was made in the wall by uh, Cromwell's uh, guns uh, firing from the high ground above us here in the Haywood Road. And um, O'Neill wasn't idle when he saw he couldn't do anything to stop the hole getting any bigger, but what he was able to do was prepare for that. So as part of what he did prepare was he prepared, if you like, a funnel here with holes or space in the walls of it um, uh, for muskets and musketeers where they could fire a shot at the advancing soldiers and literally massacre them, slaughter them as they kept poured into the town. Now, and that was very effective. And the bodies piled up, they tell us in the accounts. And those who are wounded, falling on top of others who had been wounded or killed, and then others coming in on top of them and being crushed to death, if nothing else. So it was uh, um, the worst defeat um, that Cromwell had suffered anywhere in Ireland, and some say even in England. And um, um, the extraordinary thing is he had, uh, Cromwell had great regard in fact for the defenders of Clonmel, who weren't, of course, from Clonmel. They were, um, if you like, uh, the soldiers of, uh, of O'Neill, and these soldiers were experienced uh, soldiers, Irishmen, uh, from around Tyrone, in the, count in the, in the north of Ireland. And um, they had a vast experience, and O'Neill had vast experience in siege warfare and also siege defence, which he had gained in the wars of the Spanish uh, in Spain. And, um, and again, he hoodwinked uh, um, uh, Cromwell, not just by in the surrender, but also in the very extraordinary escape um, with his army to uh, uh, oversee the defence of Waterford City itself, which remained, if you like, an orbs intacta.